Hair's out. Hair's out. Sun's out, hair's out. Sun's out, hair's out. I need a haircut. Sick flow, bro. I just shave it. I just shave it. I should just shave it. I should shave it. I should shave it. <laughs> Look at that light. My stupid head blocks it. Why is your head stupid? It just is. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about... Board games. And... Board gamey things. Exactly. So if that's what you're into, you've come to the right place, haven't they? Indeed. What's your name? Jeff. And my name is Jamie. And we are here today to do another Top 11 video. Why 11? Because we have an honorable mention. Am I doing it? You're not doing it. You just look really concerned. Top, I didn't know we were doing a top 11. You helped me create the list, and Jeff and I have collectively made this list, so we don't each have our own. This is our top 11 games that we recommend that you take. <laughs> What's the title of this video? I don't know. It's your freaking show, man. These are our top 11 games. Travel games. Top 11 travel games. Wow, that was difficult that was to top. get to. Okay, so hey. these are 11 games that we typically would either take with us traveling, we've taken them traveling, or we're planning on taking them traveling. We would not take all 11 games all These would once. just be the ones that we would normally gravitate, gravitate towards. towards. Now, there's a couple caveats to this. One, we are assume travel means flight is required, not road trip because if we're road tripping we're probably actually going to bring uh, bigger games because we're driving we can put them in the trunk whatever yeah. this is traveling internationally or via plane and you only have carry-on bag sense. you know space is at a premium mm -hmm. and this list is in no particular order no it's just yeah. 11 games that we would suggest you bring with you if you are traveling and want to bring some games and have some freaking fun I like to have fun. Not that you're not going to have fun on your vacation. I'm assuming you're going somewhere cool to do Not cool if you're things. going somewhere for like a funeral. Well, I'm not getting dark here. Why are you getting so dark? I'm just saying. Not every vacation. Would you call one. it a vacation in that instance though? A forever vacation. <laughs> Let's yeah, just, clown. Let's just get into it. Okay, the first one that we're going to mention, we don't actually own and we've never actually played. We've heard a lot about this. We've heard a lot about we it. We wanted to mention it. And we're really excited to play this when we go on our Disney trip with the Table Knots crew. Is that actually happening? It's happening. We're going to Disney. I don't Disney. know. There's a whole lot of chatter about this, but Danielle not a lot and of action. Danielle are already sold, so not a lot we'll of go action. without you guys. That game is Don't Get Got. And basically, this game gives each person a list of... Secret objectives. Secret objectives. So as an example, if I can get someone to say my birthday age. or yeah. my age out loud, yeah. then I could be like, you got that. You got it. got and you get a point or something like that. And it looks like so much fun. The perfect travel game if you are going somewhere with a group of friends or your family. I don't know how well it would work with just two. I feel like with two, you would just constantly be like, nope, this person's trying to, yeah. to get me it constantly. It just makes you suspicious of everyone. Yeah. We heard about mm -hmm. this on initially Board Game Barrage. Nope. We heard about it initially on Before You Play. I didn't. Yeah. We watched. Mm -hmm. I showed you the vlog. Nope. This was like months ago. No, it was Board Game Barrage. No. So we saw it initially on Before You Play, heard about it again on Board Game Barrage, and we noticed that Max has it yeah. on his Yeah, and then we chatted with shelf. the Table Knots guys about it. And they've played it before. So yeah. that is definitely one I think would be a great travel game. It's not one to take to a funeral. <laughs> yeah, not not a game to take to a funeral. That is our number 11 game. Don't get got. Don't, Who's don't get, get got I by? have no idea. The next game on our list. And again, not in any order. Not in any order is King Domino. And King Domino is from Blue Orange. Just Blue Orange. And this is a small box game. You're going to notice a trend here. Obviously, if you're traveling on planes. If space is a premium. Space is a premium. You might only have carry-ons, which is what we try to do unsuccessfully most of the time. So this would definitely easily fit into a carry-on. It's compact. The 5x5 five five grid that you can play with King Domino would actually fit on an airplane tray. Mm -hmm. And the tiles themselves are hefty enough that I wouldn't be worried about them like flying away. So King Domino tile placement game where you're just building out either a 5x5 five five or 7x7 seven seven grid, trying to score the most points. It's yeah. simple, it's small, it's fun. I love it. So that's our second one. This is number 10, King Domino. King Domino is a great game. You ready for number nine? Yep. Do you want me to do the next one? Yeah, you do this one. The next one we have up is a two-player, possibly the best two-player game of all time. 
Repos, Repos Productions, Seventh Continent. Seven Wonders. We're not taking Seventh Continent, Travis. Seven That's Wonders Duel. Now, this one would not be one you could play on a plane. Uh, no. Just with the setup and the pyramid of cards, it would just take way too much space. And But, small box game, Seven Wonders Duel is a two-player primary game. So keep that in mind if you're only if you're traveling in a bigger group. Basically, you're playing Seven Wonders against one other person, yep. and you're trying to complete wonders and win the game with different types of objectives. I think that one would be good for like if it's a rainy day or something. <laughs> I'm specifically thinking of us being at Disney. So like if it's yeah, a rainy day or we're not point. going to a park that day, then that's probably a game that we might play if we come home early or something. Yeah. Just, you know, just so you guys know, basically the only traveling that Jeff and I really do is to Disney World. So keep that if in you mind. you can't hour. <laughs> tell or haven't been able to tell yet. I love Disney. We are Disney World aficionados mm -hmm. we have gone a significant amount of time times in the past few years i've gone so many times probably going again this fall depending on with table knots depending on covid and stuff seven wonders duel great two-player game plays in about half an hour heavy ish strategy for that kind of small box game yep next one so we're on number eight so number eight is the crew and the crew is from cosmos and this is a cooperative trick-taking game the only thing about this i don't think you could play it on a plane no because you have to line no up yeah you need the big yeah the big lineup of cards you but this would be super fun to play this might even be fun to play like while you're at the airport and you're just kind of like waiting if you've mm -hmm. got like a little it's table just or something it's just i guess cards. it has a couple little small tokens but yeah so this one is quick to play it's like a 20 minute game and you can play as many yeah. scenarios as you want to so you can kind of just pick it up put it down it's mm -hmm. relatively easy quick and super small so that's our number eight so so far we've talked about like don't get got which is a party game kit party game party game party, party game, game. King Domino is definitely a lighter game. Seven Wonders Duel is a, probably a midweight game. The Crew, definitely lighter. So now let's go into something that is small, but definitely heavier. Yeah, and like mechanically all somewhat mechanically different. Mechanically heavier. So that is Innovation. Innovation is a card-only civilization game. This is a tiny box. It's only cards, and there is so much game in this box. And we have the yellow version. Yellow. Yellow. Like, if you're a heavier gamer and you're like, oh, I really want to take something, but you obviously can't shove, like, a Gloomhaven or a Seventh Continent or Through the Not Ages the in your suitcase, yeah. but you want something a bit meatier, then I would say this is definitely the There's a best lot of game in that box. And there's so much that you can do in this game. Also like, not a game you could play on a plane. It does no, it does it. have some significant uh, table presence in terms yeah. of So yeah. if you're wanting to take a game that's a bit heavier, if you're like we have a few, you know, nights where we don't have any plans, maybe we'll have a game night whatever. I think this yeah. would be a great one. I think that would be a great ah! one. <laughs> Sorry. Next up we have Little tiny itty bitty dungeon mayhem uh, by Wizards of the Coast. This is a very simple card game where you're basically playing as a character with a certain amount or different types of abilities. And you're just playing as many possible cards as you can on your turn in order to reduce the other player's hit points to zero. I mean, this thing is tiny. Tiny. You could play this on a plane definitely you could there's a little bit of extra components with just some tokens and stuff that might be a bit difficult to to have out on the tray um, as long as there's no turbulence i think you'd be fine yeah but that would apply to pretty much anything right yeah you could easily bring that as a carry-on too oh you could put I that mean, in your purse like the size of a wallet okay next a one. big wallet <laughs> what are you rich Ooh. next one we have is azul People are be like, what? i know what you're thinking holy crap that's a big box what are you talking day. about Dummies? So the caveat here with Azul, there's a few things. Number one, if you've ever played Azul before, you know that it comes with... I'm just going to open it up. See, who wants to fuss with all this on vacation? You don't. But you can fit everything in this one little bag. So all of the tiles in here, you could place your little these things in there, your marker cubes. So I would literally just take the bag of tiles and then two player boards, just yeah. separate. If and that's all that you need. Yeah, if you're traveling with more, obviously you would take more. Yeah. We think Azul is just quick to grab the bag, grab a couple player boards, and it's a great 
easy game. Yeah, and what I was thinking specifically for Disney in particular (laughs) is that this would be a great game to play if you're just having lunch at the resort on like the patio or Mm -hmm. something because this isn't going to blow away on you. And it's just something that you could kind of like casually play as you have a little drink or have some food or whatever it might be. That is a great, that is a great thought process. Yeah. What's a game we can take out on the, on the deck, on the deck and play when it's like a bit windier and, but it's nice out and we want to sit outside. So we tried that with innovation and the cards were like, I actually really want to play this today. So. Anyways, again, we just played it. I know, but I really want to play it again. And I won again. Next up, we have Boss Monster by Brotherwise Games. Brotherwise. We love Brotherwise Games, mm-hmm. and this is one of the easier ones to travel with. Definitely. Not a huge box, and it's just card driven. Place the mode in front of you, building out your dungeon, and having heroes go through your dungeon, knocking off hit points, and the first person to. Kill as many heroes as they can wins the game. Very simple, very Mm. small. And fun. And I absolutely adore the 8-bit artwork. Highly recommend. Yeah, and that's one I would say, I don't know that you could really play it on the plane, but definitely in a hotel room or at the airport. No, definitely not on the plane. Takes too much space. However, this one will play well on a plane. This, This might be the best one to play on a plane. Yes. If I'm looking quickly. Yes, so this is Fox in the Forest from Renegade Games. This is a two-player trick-taking game, competitive trick-taking game. Competitive trick. Um, now, there are there is a cooperative there version. There is a cooperative version of this, which I have no interest in playing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? I don't know. Probably not. So, Fox in the Forest, trick-taking game with a little bit of a flair. Some of the cards have special abilities. It is just a deck of cards and a few tokens, which you don't need the tokens if you can mm-hmm. just keep track in your head. Quick, it's fun, Even and you can easily play. You can play this anywhere. Yeah. And we have a video of us playing this while also eating disgusting bean boozle beans, which I'll also link below if you want to see how it works. And number one. Hi everyone, it's Jamie from the future, realizing that we completely forgot to put in our number two pick for this video. Whoops. We were just so excited about the next one coming up, which you'll see in a second. But our number two pick is Sushi Go, which you can play with two players, more players. It's a set collection where you're collecting sets of sushi. It's super compact. It comes in a little tin. It's super adorable, very easy to travel with. That was our number two pick. So back to the video. (laughs) Should come as no surprise to anyone. No, it shouldn't. (laughs) It's Silver Bullet from Bezier Games. And with this one, we would definitely just take the cards Mm -hmm. and maybe the bullet. You don't really need the rest of it. So we would just bring the cards and the bullet. Might not even need the bullet. The card Jamie's showing is just designating a discard and a draw pile. Yeah. I mean, you don't really need it. This is our favorite game that we play together. Yeah, we, what are we at? 30s? Oh, we're close to 40 plays this year 40 plays this year so far. You could definitely play this on a plane, I would say. A hundred percent. Yeah, and you could play it anywhere. I feel like we wouldn't go anywhere without this game. We love it so much. This game lives... Upstairs. Like next to us. It doesn't us. have a spot on the shelf. It doesn't live on our shelves. It lives upstairs pretty much like on our kitchen counter or yeah. on our dog crate. And it's the perfect travel game. It does have a actual bullet. You designate a certain player that has that in it. It allows you to kind of manipulate your cards in front of you. Mm-hmm. That would be the only thing that we you would... I don't even think you would need to take it. You could probably just... We could probably just use like a quarter. No, you could use... Anything. You could use anything. It doesn't need to be that bullet. Like it could a, be anything you yeah, have in your hand. from your bag. And there are three other silver games as well. Mm. So, I mean, if we were to take probably only one game traveling, it would be Silver yeah. Bullet. And we are getting the rest of the silver games as well. Mm-hmm. I might just bring all of them because they're like interchangeable and just... Yeah, we we started this by saying like cards. they they weren't ranked in order and they're not... But I but would say <laughs> if if we're take if we're given an option of taking one of these games with mm-hmm. us, it is going to be Silver Bullet. Indeed. Yeah. Yes. Love Silver Bullet. So those are our top eleven games that we would travel with. We would love to. We know. also did not designate. Like we weren't like this is number six. This is number no, five. But those are ten, those are eleven games. <laughs> So we would love to know below what some games are that are your go-to travel games. Yeah, there's probably some we've, there's probably, well, I shouldn't say there probably is, there's There's definitely definitely games we just never played or owned that would fit this category as well. If you have 
Any recommendations at all for games that travel well, please let us know because we're always looking for them. Specifically, like any just card-based games. Mm -hmm. Like I was going to put Taco Cat Go Choose Pizza because it is a card game, but it's a bit more of like a party game and all that stuff. So Again, it would depend on how many you're traveling with. If we were traveling with a group of four, absolutely, I'd take that. Yeah. The assumption here is that we're traveling together. It's just Jamie and I, and these would be the games we would take together. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let us know down below any recommendations that you might have or what you typically take when you travel. And Mm -hmm. also let us know down below if you're also a fan of Disney World. (laughs) Because I am. (laughs) Oh, man. Hey, if you're interested in buying board games, a great place to start is your friendly local gaming store. And for us here in Halifax, that is... The Boardroom Game Cafe? Exactly. On Barrington? On Barrington Street. You can find all of their information right here and it's also listed down below. So if you're local... Do we, we do that too long? I don't know. Probably. Did that get creepy? Probably. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you, you like, like what you TV, see, please, please subscribe. subscribe. And what are you doing? You couldn't wait? Do you ever get when it's like, oh my God, I are rubbing my face in my eyes. I couldn't wait. It was demanding attention. Don't forget to follow us on social media, on Instagram and Twitter. We are at Foster the Meeple. So follow us along there and join us as we talk about board games. One of us. One of us. One of us. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Later days. Goodbye. Why'd you start copying me? I like to do this. That's me. That's what I do. Get over it. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. And welcome back to Foster the Meeple, where we talk about board games and board gamey things. I'm your host, Jamie. editing time. This is my co-host. Don't recommend playing Don't Get Got at a Funeral. You got I don't got know, maybe. Uh, my life. Oh, I was going to say a kudo. A <laughs> I was going to say a kudo. You know, the old cooties. Uh, which is a phone company here. I don't know if that's yeah. in the States. Here. I'm phrasing things very oddly. Mm-hmm. No. Yep. Nope. Yep. 11. Nope. Don't oh, do that. right. 11, 10, 90. There's you the smudgeness. Got, there's, there's the smudgeness. And it's relatively like, what? I just kept cutting you. Yeah. And well, I was having a thought. I had a thought, and you weren't letting me finish. You always seem like you're finished, though, so then I start God. talking, and you're like... Well, I'm a, slow, ah! I'm a slow talker. I know. Okay. Yeah. Jamie. Mm-hmm. Ooh, spoiler. Ooh. You were talking. I was?